let's go over the Doppler effect equations in more detail. Um, I put this meme right here. This is one that I made myself. So avoid the red lights by driving at this speed in kilometers per hour because that will blue shift the lights enough to appear red, uh, green. So this actually uh, should work if you do this equation, delta lambda over lambda is approximately equal to V over C. That should work. But okay, let's actually go over this one here. So if we have a moving source, here's a source that's moving towards the observer. Well, then what's going to happen? And I, before we do that, I just want to remind you, or so we remind ourselves at least of the basics here. So if v, the wave equation V equals F lambda, uh, what happens if something is going towards and what happens if something is going away? Well, something is coming towards the observer. If you think about this one here, that's the wavelength here. That means we can say that, oh, the wavelength is going to be uh, smaller. And that means the frequency then will be higher. And by contrast, if it's going away, over here this here is a larger value, so you can say the wavelength will increase, therefore the frequency will decrease. This is a piece that's really, really good to just remind ourselves. That's why I put it here, just sort of remember. Because this uh, idea will really help us. So let's go through the equation uh, from your data booklet, and this has to do with sound. Uh, so let's see, so moving source, we'll say F primed equals F times V over V plus or minus US. Now what does everything mean? We've got these variables. F primed is what the observer actually observes. That's what they measure. That's F primed. Whereas uh, F is the emitted frequency. By the way, both of these are in hertz. Now we've got V, that's just the speed of sound. Uh, that'll be in meters per second. And then we've got US is the speed of your source. Now why is there a plus or minus? Well, it depends if your source is coming towards the observer or if it's going away from it. Now, I like to think of it, if I just use my brain a little bit, uh, I can usually sort this out and figure out if it should be a plus or minus. The way I think of it is this. If it's coming towards you, I use this idea where you hey, towards me, it should be a higher frequency. I just think of a car going, you know, the lower frequency when it goes away. Uh, higher frequency when it comes towards. If the frequency here has to be higher, that means if I want F prime to be higher or larger, then that means I want to divide by a smaller number. And if I want to divide by a smaller number, what's the smallest number I can put here? Make this a minus. So I mean, of course, you can see it like this and say, well, if a source is moving away, uh, sorry, towards you, use minus US. Um, and of course, if a source is moving away from you, you want to use plus. And why is that? Again, because if I, it's going away, I want the frequency to be smaller. If I want F prime to be smaller, I want to divide by a bigger number. That means I want to have a plus here. So again, if you use some logic, you don't really have to memorize this piece right here. Just know this right here and just think about, hey, do I want my F prime to be bigger or smaller? Then you figure out the sign of which one you need to use. Now, what if it's the observer that's the one that's moving? Well, then we have another equation for that one, and it's very, very similar to what we saw before. So it's F prime equals F times, and this time it's V plus or minus UO. That's on the top, the plus or minus over V. Now, what are all the different variables? They're the same as before. The only difference is UO, that's the speed of the observer. So O is for observer, whereas before the S was for source. Like I said, the only difference though is this is a plus or minus goes on the top. But again, just use some thought. If you get a question on this on an exam, just make sure you think, hey, do I want the observed frequency to be higher? If so, then I want to make this number bigger, you know, so I want to add. If I want to make this number here smaller, then I would make this a minus, for example. So if we have this example, we have a car approaching a stationary observer at a constant speed of 10 meters per second. So that would mean then, you know, uh, just like we've been drawing before with these concentric circles here, I'm just going to try to do it like this. I'm not so good at doing them quickly, but I think you'll understand the idea. Now this one right here, though, if you're observing this right here, but like this, this is your observer. And if that's the case, then what do we have? Well, I know that the wavelength will be lower, so I know the frequency will be higher. I know something like this right here, what's going to happen, right, if it's coming towards. Um, okay, so first of all, the first question is, what is the observed speed of sound as the car approaches? This is actually a trick question, right? The speed of sound is going to be constant. It's just going to be uh, 330 meters per second. So what will it equal? It'll just be 330 meters per second. Uh, so there we go. That was just the speed of sound as constant. Okay, well, that was kind of silly, but hey, it's important to know how to answer these kind of things. Now comes the interesting question. What is the frequency of the emitted sound by the car? So we're going to have to figure out, first of all, do we have a moving source or a moving observer? 
Well, we have a moving source because it's a car that's approaching the observer. If that's the case, then I'm going to use my uh, Doppler equation, F prime equals F times V over V plus or minus Vs, or Us, sorry, where that's the speed of the source. So I'm going to have to figure out a few things here. So first of all, um, what am I going to use? Am I going to use a plus or a minus? Well, if it's coming towards, I want f to be, uh, I want f prime to be larger, right? So if we have f going to be larger, or f prime, I mean, sorry, I want f prime to be larger. What happens? Then I want to divide by a smaller number. So I'm going to use uh, minus, okay? because it's coming towards. So that's that means I'm going to have this equation then go f primed, and that was important just to figure out, right? So f uh, times v over v minus us. And again, just to remind you, I want my observed frequency to be larger, so if I divide by a smaller number here, then that's going to make this here larger, right? Dividing by a smaller number makes this number here larger. Okay, so let's just put in what we know and what we don't know, and we'll see if we can figure them out. So do we know all these things? We actually do. The frequency of the emitted sound is actually what we're looking for. Uh, so we want that one. Do we know F primed? We do. We know that's uh, 450. Basically, we know most of this right here, right? So we just want to figure out F. So if we do this right here, we can put in the numbers. We can say then that, uh, let's see, so F primed is 450 hertz. That's going to equal F, ooh, that we're looking for out of that. Uh, all that times V, which is a speed of sound, which is 330. Divide that by 330 minus, um, and then uh, speed of the car, which is 10. Okay, so if I do this right here, um, I can, of course, just do this on my calculator, and I can figure out the answer then for F. So let's start off like here, like this, and let's say, okay, first of all, I have 330. Divide that by, well, 330 minus 10 is just 320. So what's 330 divided by 320? Okay, so that's uh, going to be, whoops, let's see, that's going to be 1.03125. Well, that means then, really simply, that I can just figure out F, right? So F is just going to be 450 over that same number, uh, 1.03125. So let's just go ahead and figure that out. So I just have to go um, 450 divided by the answer, and there we go. I've got an answer of uh, 436.36, let's see. So if I want this answer, uh, well, it's going to be in hertz. And if I look at the significant figures, I can use two significant figures here. So I'll say uh, f is approximately equal to, let's see, I can say 4, I'll make this a 4, so it'll be 440. So I can say it's roughly 440 hertz. And hopefully this will make sense then that the, okay, the what is actually emitted is going to be lower than what is received. You notice, you know, just like we've been learning, that this thing right here uh, should actually, you know, be going up. In other words, um, this 440, which is emitted, what's actually heard is 450, which is higher pitch. So this actually makes sense right here that our F primed is actually higher, right? Our F primed, that was this one right here, was F primed that we got.